Hi, so in this tutorial we're just going to walk you through the steps um, for creating an automated transcript from media files. Um, this is a paid service from QSR but you can do it straight out of the, the software. Um, so the first thing you have to do is create an, a, a My In Vivo account. Now you can do that directly on the QSR website or you can do it um, from the app. And that's free to set up and in fact you get free 15 minutes as a introductory kind of free trial um, to test how this works for your, one of your own tapes audios um, so that's the first thing you set that up and then you can access everything directly from the app you can see here that is a this is the your account and I'm already logged in so I can now create um, transcripts from audio so this is an interview. It's just about five minutes long, so we can show these reasonably quickly. And um, you can see it's it's not been transcribed. So the first thing to do is to right click on it and create an in vivo transcription. So it's now logging in and it's preparing to upload this file. It's now uploading it, so it does it pretty quickly. And it's now asking me to select a language. I'm going to select English and I'm telling it now to transcribe. You can pre-buy credits, by the way, you know, ahead. So you, you, if you know how much any hours you need to do, you can you can prepay for your hours. I have some, I have 291 minutes left here. So I'm going to tell this to transcribe. The tape is about five, I'm showing my age when I refer to tapes. The audio is about five, five minutes and 40 seconds long. It's going to take about half that length of time uh, to transcribe. So, um, you'll see the output of it then in a few minutes. So I'm just going to pause the tape while it does that and um, we'll show you how that completes then shortly. So it's now completed the process and this little um, dialog box here changes to review transcript um, instead of transcribing. So it's now completed, now I can review my transcript. So it opens it up like this in my browser and there it is. And this is linked live to the audio and anywhere I click that's the passage that will be played you see the little amber line underneath the word and that will run along as the tape runs along so I can check and and fix and you'll see from when we play a couple of seconds of this that it it's done a pretty good job from a one-to-one -one interview um, the first note of caution here would be that this is entirely dependent on the quality of the tape um, but assuming that it's a reasonable quality you'll see now what it's done this, this one here is a group of volunteers in Florida, in the United States, who are working on an environmental conservation project. They're basically cleaning up some um, wetlands, I think. Um, any thoughts about what this group is doing? So you can see it's done a, a pretty accurate job there. It doesn't punctuate perfectly. It doesn't know when that's a question, for example. And you'll see now that it's also not identified quite correctly where Peter has begun to speak. Uh, well, this is a, I find this a slightly hard photo to interpret um, and also I seem to be getting on a bit of a, a, a high horse now. Uh, so we edit the tape, or the transcript should I say, and we fix that as we go along. So I can say that's actually Peter talking there, not, not where he broke it up. And I can now punctuate and correct those little minor errors. So this is the interviewer speaking. And it'll recognize now that, and if I go down here and I'll say, well, this is actually Peter. And he doesn't say all this. He says, ah, I find this hard. So I just correct this and say, a slightly hard photo. And if I want to just say, well, take take it from there, I can now play it and I can listen to see what else do I need to correct. I find this a slightly hard photo to interpret. Um, and also, I seem to be getting on a bit of a, a, a high horse now. Um, the, the So, let's put a capital in there for high, so I correct it, so you get the idea, you can correct as you go along, and you now have um, a transcript. It's quite easy to correct because it's linked all the time live to the text, to the, to the media file. So, um, having completed that, the next step will then to import the transcript. So if I go back to my account here, it's 
So I'm going back now to my in vivo, which is still sitting here with the dialog box open. I've now reviewed and corrected the transcript. I simply import it. So it's now importing it. It tells me it's successfully imported. So when I close the dialog box and I open up my interview with Peter, I now have a perfectly synchronized transcript ready to go. Of course, I can also bring this in as a Word file. I can simply export it as a Word file and bring it in if I don't want it synchronized. But in here, it is synchronized with the media. So when I want to play, I can obviously I can read, and I can annotate, and I can code, and I can search because it's now text as well. But I can also play any segments that I'm listening to. Just a few more pictures. This this one here, which can be advantageous if you're working with. Um, interviews where there's maybe emotion in the voice that you want to hear as well as read um, because how something was said can alter the meaning of what was said and its meaning that you're coding for. Um, I did correct this transcript and these are the, the kind of health warnings that come with it. As I said earlier, this is completely contingent, contingent on the quality of the interview transcript. Um, so if there are heavy accents, if people are cross-talking, if they're using a lot of jargon or um, colloquialisms, names that are unusual or that wouldn't be in such standard name databases, um, then you may have to do a bit more correcting. This tape is five, it's just six minutes long. This is just a copy that we did earlier uh, and it's been absolutely corrected. I just gave you an example of the beginning of the process there. This is now a verbatim transcript of that tape. It, it did take me about 20 minutes to correct it. Now, I would be fussy. I would set a pretty high standard, and I could see there's an error there already. Um, but I would want it to punctuate so it reads like it was said. And so I would take quite a bit of care with how I would transcribe, because that would be important to me. Um, if it were a secondary data of some other kind, then I mightn't be quite as fussy. But certainly with primary interviews or focus groups, I would be particularly careful to track back, to, to correct, uh, to punctuate it so it reads like it was said. And so maybe I might be a little bit more fussy than, than some of you would need to be. But as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty impressive uh, time saving. If, if, ever, if anyone has ever done manual transcription, I can tell you that is a lot faster, uh, even allowing for corrections than um, doing it the old fashioned way. So we just thought we'd put this video up there as a tutorial to show you the steps. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll um, if you have any questions or concerns, you can just send us an email and we'll, we'll deal with those. Thanks.